Go ahead. Okay, start. Hello, welcome everybody. Um, welcome to this week um, of Independent University. Um, I'm going to talk about SSI and work incentives. My name is Ashley Hessler. I am a community work incentive coordinator with the Center for Accessible Living. And like I said, I'm going to share a PowerPoint presentation on SSI and work incentives. You can go ahead and start. Alrighty. Maybe if you want to minimize me a little bit. So, like I said, I work for the Center for Accessible Living, and we have multiple programs at the center, one of which is the WIPA, um, who Social Security um, Social Security um, actually hosts, has the WIPA program, uh, Work Incentive Planning and Assistance Program. Um, there's three CWICs, Donna Mundy um, and David Edwards. So today I will be presenting. Next slide, please. All righty, so SSI stands for Supplemental Security Income. And it is based on um, your financial needs um, and the details of your living situation. Lots of things go into um, factors when Social Security is determining the amount that you get. Um, it's designed, the program is designed for food and shelter only. Um, there is a formula that's designed um, and calculated each and every month. Um, and it's based on the federal benefit rate. This year is $783. That's basically the maximum amount that an individual will get uh, per month. Um, for the couple, uh, for a couple that's, you know, both individuals are on SSI, um, that monthly total would actually be only $1,174. In SSI, um, also there is a resource level resource limit per se. So that's that, you know, monies that you can have in savings and checking combined and also other things are can be considered resources. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Um, but the main part of WIPA um, and work incentives um, overall is to kind of show somebody on SSI that working is always going to be better for the individual all around and having more money um, is always going to be the case when you're going back to work. Um, and we're going to kind of get into that um, and kind of jump over everything a little bit um, here, but not too much in details. But my information is going to be at the very end of this slide uh, presentation, so you can send me questions um, if I didn't touch on everything. Um, so let's go to the next slide. Thank you. All right, overall, the work incentives. Um, the um, the first one that you know that everyone is going to see is that um, the two for one reduction um, and the the two income exclusions. So again, this is when somebody goes to work and has income. Um, so you have the general income that is the twenty dollars they're going to exclude actually from any income. So if there's earned income or unearned income, but then the work income that is actually from that gross. Um, earned income would be the $65. So Social Security is going to say, you know, you're going to work um, in every calendar month, um, whatever you've earned that month, we're not going to count $65 of it. We're going to do that at least. And then we're not going to count um, two for one reduction. So after we take the 65, um, we're going to count um, only half of what's left. So I think that is really, really cool. So Social Security is saying, hey, you go work and we're only going to count half of it against you. Um, I think that's super cool. And that right there tells you you're always going to have more money um, when you're working. Um, a couple other um, exclusions that they will, um, will kind of take off um, during that equation that they're doing um, are actually called impairment related work expenses. And for the blind individuals, um, blind work expenses. So these are similar, but a little different. We'll touch these a little bit. Um, some really cool um, 
tools that individuals can use, um, a plan for achieving self-support, which we call a PASS, and for students, um, student earned income exclusion. And my favorite of all is 1619B, which is basically Medicaid protection. All right, so now we're gonna dive into a little deeper into these. Next slide, please. All right, income. This can be kind of super confusing. Um, a lot of people ask me um, what is considered income in SSI. Um, pretty much everything. Um, Social Security is going to say, um, you know, income affects SSI. A lot of stuff is income, but what is it? Earned income or unearned income? That's kind of what the question is. So the very top bullet point, earned income, you know, you earned it. You went to work for it. So you've got wages, net earnings from self-employment, royalties, like, you know, a book that you wrote 10 years ago and you're still selling copies and you're getting a little bit here and there. Um, unearned income, that would be something that you're not currently working for, but you're still getting it, like maybe SSDI, you're getting a little bit, or CDB, you're getting it off of some of your parents. Um, pensions, unemployment, um, like maybe some COVID money, that would be unearned income. In-kind support or in-kind income would be um, something that's very common actually, SSI, um, remember what I said at the very beginning is counted for is, is really designed for food and shelter only. So if an adult um, who's getting SSI, 783, that full federal benefit rate, is living at home um, with their parent, no harm done, but they're actually not paying rent. So they're getting their shelter paid for, basically, by somebody else. So Social Security is going to say that their shelter is paid for, therefore they don't want to pay for their shelter, so that's considered in-kind support and that will actually reduce that SSI payment each month. Um, and the last one, not the last one, so there's actually a lot more income, but this is just another example, is deemed income. So a spouse, again, another, or a parent, um, you know, they're gonna look at that household as a whole, and if they, you know, depending on what kind and what type and how much income that household is bringing in, it's very possible that that SSI check could be deemed or reduced. Um, okay, so down at the bottom, let's see, this is where we get into that formula, and actually I'm just going to um, skip to the next slide, because we're going to talk about how the income is counted for SSI on the next page with the formula. Alrighty, um, this formula is done each and every month, um, you know, by an SSA employee, and so that's why it is super important when you are going back to work that you report each and every month. Um, at the end of the month, you want to mail, drop in, report online. There's multiple different ways to report and um, that's something that your CWIC or um, somebody else that you're working with can help you give you all the instructions too. But back to the formula. Okay, so first, they will first do that general exclusion. So this could come from the unearned income, like if you have an SSDI or something else, some other kind of earned, unearned income, they will take that 20 from there first. If not, um, let's say you've just got the gross income from your job, they'll start and take the 20 from there first. Then the 65, which is that earned income exclusion. So if we just have money from a job, we're looking at that calendar month gross wages, so they'll start with the general 20, subtract the 65, and then they will take um, that two for one reduction. Again, basically, you know, dividing your wages in half. And they're looking for, you know, they're gonna come up with the countable earnings. Now that term's pretty important. It's not something you have to remember. We're not gonna give you a test, um, but that's what Social Security is looking for. They're looking for countable earnings. Then they're gonna take that federal benefit rate or whatever your SSI is at that time, you know, and say, okay, so let's say it's 783, and they're gonna subtract the, count, the countable earnings from that. So there's your SSI check for the month. If you have a consistent schedule, you know, you're working 20 hours every week, and do you kind of know what your paycheck's gonna be, you can kind of plan out your SSI check each month. If you don't know what your hours are gonna be, and your, your check's a little sporadic, then you know, you got a little bit more surprise SSI check coming, but um, you know, no worries, as long as, um, you have a, you know, a handle on things and the gist of it, um, you should be able to manage your money 
pretty well. Um, I think there might even be another example on the next slide. Yes. Oh, it's John's paycheck. Um, so good. This is a good example. So um, he received, this is John, and he receives SSI only, and he is um, getting the full federal benefit rate right now, which is 783. And he is earning gross wages of $600 per month. And, um, and he doesn't have any unearned income. So we're gonna say he just has the earned income. So you can see there, they start by taking the 20, which is that general income exclusion. Then they follow up with subtracting the, the earned income, which is the 65, and then followed up by the um, dividing it by two, that two for one reduction. So now, John's countable income for this, this one month is $257.50. You take that from the um, SSI rate, and I don't know if you can see the bottom because I can't, but I don't know if it's just because of Zoom, but the highlighted part there at the bottom shows you his um, new SSI payment, which is $525.50. Um, but that's just his new SSI payment. Um, so if you, go back in, you know, just to get this overall monthly view of what his, you know, financial situation looks like. His SSI is $525.50, but then remember he's got the $600 in gross wages. So now his overall monthly income is $1,125.50. So again, his SSI check went down a little bit, but because of the two for one reduction, he has more money overall. So this is what's so good about the SSA work incentives. And I get so excited talking about it because it works and you know, they really do want you to reach financial stability and this is the way to do it. So um, working, it's always a good thing. So let's move forward. All right. These next couple of slides are talking about impairment related work expenses in the blind work expenses. Not everyone will have these work expenses. They're pretty specific. Um, and they are documented expenses paid for by the individual that has the disability that are specifically related to your disability or impairment that they have on file at Social Security. And you need them necessary for you to work. Um, it's not paid by or you know, reimbursed by somebody else. Um, there's a few examples listed here, medication, assistive technology, some transportation costs. I will give you the easiest one example. Um, I work with tons of young ladies and gentlemen out at UPS, and a lot of them use TARC-3 as transportation costs because of their impairment, they cannot ride um, the regular TAR or drive, and if they are on SSI, they save all of the receipts from every dollar they spend on TARC-3 because they buy their own TARC-3 tickets, and it's three dollars for every time they get on, um, and then they turn that, um, that monthly total of TARC-3 in, and then actually it goes into the um, calculation, and I won't go back, but it, it's actually put in before it's divided in half, so basically you're getting half of the cost you spent on TARP 3 back on your SSI check. So that's just one example. So it can definitely help offset um, some of your cost and get more back in SSI. Um, so let's go back, let's go forward one slide and I'll show you the smidge difference with the blind work expenses. Very similar, um, you know, similar to, Irwies, the impairment related work expenses are all included here, but the blind work expenses, there's more, um, and it obviously only pertain to individuals that are considered statutory blind per Social Security and is listed um, on their record. Also, um, they get to include and claim taxes withheld. So normally we're always talking about gross wages but a person who's blind and receiving SSI, they're actually going to get, um, to, get to go by their net. Um, but I always still say gross, and then we talk about turning in a blind work expense with their taxes. Um, you know, if they have a service animal, um, any kind of so service cost, excuse me, um, that pertains to that service animal that they are paying for out of pocket, 
meals consumed at work is a really, really big one um, that I push. You know, if you're, if there's a cafeteria, you're spending $5 a day on lunch, or you're going to Kroger and you're spending, you know, what equivalent to $5 a day on lunch and groceries and taking your lunch. Either way, receipts, receipts, receipts are very, very important for either Erwies or Beewees to be turned in with the pay stubs at the end of each and every month. And again, can offset a very big cost in that SSI check and make it go back up. So these are some of my you know, really favorite work incentives. Um, and, but it's very important for you as the individual to take control of those receipts and turn them in. Um, so your SSI can be as, as much as possible. So next slide please. All right, um, pass, plan for achieving self-support. This is a really cool tool if you have a specific work goal. It can be tedious um, and very um, long process. However, but somebody that is very goal oriented and um, willing to be patient, I think this could be a really cool tool. Now the, the, the excuse me, the link at the bottom I find is, is, is a really good tool because it gives good examples. But in a nutshell, um, if you have income or resources that you could set aside per se to, to reach a goal, then, and you have an approved pass, you know, basically Social Security kind of saves this money from you, you know, raises your SSI back up, that amount that you've set aside to, to meet a goal, so whether it's a, you know, you're saving for a vehicle so you could get to that job or you're saving for money for school um, there's so many things that you could save for in a past plan to reach a work goal. Um, and it's just really, really cool um, tool that Social Security offers. This is a Social Security work incentive and um, something that really people don't know about. And uh, again, it just kind of shows you how Social Security is offering these awesome work incentives to show you that they do care and they do want their beneficiaries to reach uh, financial stability. So I don't want to touch too much on the past. We might even do, do a whole video on a past because it is just very, very deep um, and complicated, but can be super cool. And I'm just not an expert on past, <laughs> um, but we can go to the next slide, see what's next. All right, the student earned income exclusion I could talk about a lot about this. It's actually pretty simple and really cool. Um, you have to be a cer certain age to take advantage of this, but if you are on SSI, if you're receiving SSI benefits and you're under the age of 22 um, and you're re regularly attending school, um, they basically don't count most of your income. Um, they'll exclude $1,900 of your wages a month if you're still in school. So this could be you know, high school, college. Um, they do have a longer definition. Um, Social Security has a longer definition of regularly attending school. Um, I've just included just a few bullet points just for today, um, for today's PowerPoint. You know, in college, um, like I said, you could be in um, grade school, training courses to prepare for employment. Um, you know, don't be afraid to ask Social Security. Say, hey, I'm in this. Um, class. Does this constitute as me being a student? I'm 21. I'm also working here. Boom. If you're earning $1,000 a month and they're going to consider you as a student, boom, now they're excluding all of this income that you have and your SSI is back to 783 for the month. This is huge. So, I mean, this is, if someone doesn't know about the student on income exclusion and then you know the social security employee didn't catch it that this person's under 22 you know to me that's just a lot of money you're missing out on and you know people are human at social security um, office so you know make sure um, that you're letting them know hey I'm a student hey I'm under 21 so they're making the proper notations on your account so you are taking advantage of all the work incentives um, so you can maximize your SSA check SSI check excuse me Alrighty, this is at 1619B I talked about, and people have probably never heard of it before, but um, I think most people know that Medicaid comes with SSI. 
you might be used to hearing passport comes with SSI. The passport is just a carrier. Medicaid is really um, what we need to be using that term. That's the health care that comes with SSI. And in most states, definitely here in Kentucky, it's completely free. Um, while you are getting SSI, any amount of your SSI check, it is completely, um, you know, no worries. You definitely have Medicaid eligibility. No worries at all. Well, some people might worry, okay, well, if I start to work, you know, my SSI is creeping down because my earnings are going up. Well, here is your savior. Even if your SSI check goes to zero, you, because you are working, here's the catch, because you are working and it went to zero, your Medicaid is protected through 1619B. And the, the threshold, there is a threshold, but you are protected up until $31,106 in annual wages. So for somebody that isn't so worried about the SSI monies coming each month, but they're really worried about the Medicaid protection and losing that, I sell them, I go right to 1619B. Because look, I mean, if you're gonna go work and you're just worried about Medicaid, well, what are you, what are you planning on earning annually? If, you're, if your job is only planning on paying you $30,000 annually, but they don't offer you insurance, boom, you can take this job and still be protected under Medicaid, under 1619B. Um, of course, there's still some other um, qualifications. You still, of course, have to have that disability requirement um, and stay under the resource limits. Um, but this is just a really cool thing um, to let you have a peace of mind that you can work, even if your SSI creeps to zero, you have Medicaid protection. Um, I can't stress that enough, that just letting you know um, how good you can feel trying something and going to work and see if you can physically do something and to know that your Medicaid is intact um, while you're trying something different. It's gotta feel good. So that's why that's my favorite work incentive for sure. Alrighty, this is, what is WIPA? I talked on WIPA a little bit at the beginning. Um, again, this is paid for, you know, um, created by um, the Social Security Administration, SSA. And it's, it's very, very important. And WIPA has been around for a very, very long time. I've only been part of WIPA for about three years. And um, it is the Work Incentive Planning and Assistance Program. Um, when I first started, I had no idea why I was needed because of course all the Social Security employees should know about these work incentives. But honestly, they just don't have time to sit out and plan it and assist people with it. So that's why um, the Center for Accessible Living has the WIPA program. So uh, the CWICS, um, and that's what you can see here on the bullet point four, that's what I am. I'm a community work incentive coordinator. So I help, um, I've been trained by the WIPA program to help um, plan and assist you with the work in incentives. Um, and this is across the United States, all 50 states have a WIPA program or multiple WIPA programs. Uh, we actually have another WIPA program um, on the Eastern part of Kentucky that is ran through the Goodwill. So, and we partner with them and meet with them each month and just make sure that we're all on the same page because we love to give really, really good um, services. So I love being part of the WIPA program. Let's see what else we got here. Um, just like we talked about, um, and we'll, there will probably be some more videos, um, but the WIPA gives free work incentives counseling. Um, we do not charge because we have already paid for through the WIPA service. We help any beneficiaries um, that are getting SSI and SSDI um, that are ages 14 all the way up to full retirement age. The reason why we stop at full retirement age is because once you've reached that age, there are no rules to working. You can work as much as you want. Um, but we know how important it is um, and how stressful it is really when the rules and the limits and all that is dealing with social security. So we want to be there for you all to answer the questions, know your options, and so you can make informed choices um, when you're returning to work. Um, the CWICs, the Community Work Incentive Coordinators like myself, um, like I said, we've been through training. Um, we continue to have to get updated on our first certification and we give you individual 
individualized time, multiple calls, meetings, if that's necessary. Um, we analyze your, your situation, your goals, um, everything that you have going on, your wants and needs, so you understand, and your family, um, everything that is going on today and in the future, so you can set yourself up for success. Um, let's see, um, this is actually really important. I was gonna skip over this, but I do want to tell you about this um, second bullet point. CWICs do not report beneficiary information to Social Security or manage benefits. So a lot of people call me a case manager, but we're actually not. We really do specialize in just giving information and resources um, when you're returning work to help you be independent um, I will tell you how to report. I do not report for you, nor do we have um, access to Social Security computers. So we're really like contractors um, through Social Security. Of course, we do have Social Security clearance, but again, we do not have access to the computer system. So we do not report information um, to directly to Social Security. Let's see what's on the next slide. Ticket to work um, is something that you've probably heard multiple times. Um, some people call me and they say, I'm the ticket to ride line, but no, we have the ticket to work helpline. And that is through Social Security. Again, you might hear the WIPA, but it's all, all really the same thing. But if you put a call and say, you know, get me to the ticket to work helpline, um, you would probably get there and they would tell you about work incentives. Um, and then you would get to a CWIC eventually if you wanted to get through to a referral and ask questions. So you would either get to myself. Um, again, my name's Ashley Hessler. And if you want to go to the next slide, um, I can talk about the ticket to work line and introduce um, the two other CWICs. Um, so Donna Mundy is um, the project director and she also gets ticket to work referrals. <clears throat> and David Edwards um, also is to see what they have been doing this for a lot longer than I have, but he also gets the ticket to work referrals. So we get referrals directly from Social Security from the ticket to work helpline. And we do our thing, we talk about all the work incentives, and then we also give you resources directly to either OVR, which is the Office of Vocational Rehab, or Employment Networks, who are both entities that can assign your ticket um, and help you find you know, employment and reach any of your other goals. So. The whole um, circle of things is, can be pretty big and broad, but the whole gist of it is to help you um, reach financial stability. Um, and this is just a small portion of it. Again, this is just talking about SSI and work incentives today. Um, so I really appreciate your time and listening to just specifically this topic, um, but maybe next week we'll come back and talk about SSDI and work incentives. If you have any questions about anything that I talked about, or if you would like me to elaborate on anything, um, absolutely shoot me an email, or um, you can call my cell phone and ask me. Or if you would like to um, have a specific video done, done on one work incentive, or maybe a past plan, absolutely um, drop some suggestions in, and I would love to do a video on that as well. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great day. Went great, I thought. You think? Did I talk too fast? Nah. Uh, well, let me know if you need to redo it. Cause... Oh, I don't think so. But I okay. will, in, in the next couple of days, I'll send you the recording and see what you think. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to talk too long because I don't know if I can edit our chatter out. So. Uh... Okay. Okay. Thanks All right. a lot. All right, bye. Bye. Thanks. No problem.